Alright everyone, and welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you're new here, I'm Christina, aka That Variety, and today we're gathered here for the Friday Night Smackdown after WrestleMania. But WrestleMania is not the only headline that we've got this week. Uh, WWE got sold to Endeavor. It was effectively more of a merger with UFC, like, to kind of get it under the Endeavor umbrella, essentially, from what I've gathered. Again, this is one of these cases where my peanut butter and chocolate are mixing together, and I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like when that happens. I'm just here to watch my stories, okay? And rest assured, as long as we are having fun watching our stories every week, then we're going to keep reacting to it no matter what happens. Because I know we, 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 we all watch Monday Night Raw, right? We all watch the Raw after Mania. Now keep in mind, I vote for that being the third worst Raw after Mania, in my humble opinion. Because remember the ones that happened during 2020 and 2021? I know that we had like, you know, the Thunderdome and Empty Arena era at the time and just the world global situation, everything like that. But yeah, I think all three of them kind of need to be up there for the top three. Based on what we have tonight on the card, though, I think this night's going to be pretty stacked. But I am cautiously optimistic. We have Sami Zayn and Jey Uso having a match. Triple H has a big announcement, and I'm hoping that it's kind of similar to what we got on Monday, because I think we all need that little bit of reassurance. I think that's reasonable. We have Santos Escobar and Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio and Damian Priest. Rhea Ripley's making her first appearance as SmackDown's champion. Kevin and Sammy are making their first appearance on SmackDown since winning the tag titles. And it looks like we have the Brawling Brutes versus Imperium to kick things off. So, as per usual, grab your snacks. Grab your choice of beverage, get comfy and cozy, and let's watch the Friday Night Smackdown after WrestleMania, y'all. I always have to take a second to just kind of take in the ring announcement for Imperium. She just does such a good job. Alrighty, we got Butch and Vinci starting things out here in this matchup. I'm so curious as to what everyone's going to be doing like now that we've moved past WrestleMania. I want to keep this in mind moving ahead, too, that Sheamus was not the one that was pinned in that triple threat matchup. So that does technically leave the window open for Sheamus versus Gunther 3. I don't know when we're going to see it, but it does leave that window open. We've watched the same uh, Vinci over the past so many months, right? He's a pretty strong dude! All right, Butch is back inside the match. And, and see, they're bringing it up on commentary. How can they be at 100%? I would not expect them to be at 100%. I'm telling y'all, we're going to get Gunther versus Sheamus 3. And that's when Sheamus is actually going to win the title. That that I'm calling it now, people. I'm calling it now. It could be one of these things that doesn't age well, but shh, shh. All right, well, we just got back from the commercial break, and they just went right into a bit of some sort of a catching superplex type of thing. Okay, I'm down for it, because it looked cool. See, that's a smart tag out right there. All right, Ridge is in, Kaiser's in. Okay, that was a nice little counter there. <laughs> Did you all just see Butch in the corner over there? He's just like, go get him. Oh, he's so close. Oh, he got the tag into Sheamus. Sheamus and Gunther are slugging it out. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. What was that from Kaiser? He just did, like, this kind of cool, like, slam or whatever. I don't know what move it was, but it was pretty cool. All righty. Sheamus with the cover and the pinfall, and the Brutes have won. Definitely a fun opening matchup that we had between these two teams. They always have good chemistry with each other. And it continued, you know, the feud between Sheamus and Gunther and, of course, the, their respective teams. So overall, I thought we were off to a good little start. We got about 20 minutes into the show so far, and it went by pretty quick. So this matchup gets a thumbs up for me. <laughs> Oh my god, the little smoke machine. <laughs> I don't know why I find it so funny. That's just their plain as day. Okay, while Ivar is making his way down to the ring, uh, they just had an advertisement out of nowhere uh, for a WWE live event coming in June here to Cincinnati. We never get the summer shows. I'm just still blown away that they actually gave us a summer show here in Cincinnati for WWE. This like never happens. It's usually either in winter, it's usually like September to like January. There's nothing in between. <laughs> All right, let's get to the match. Okay, Valhalla just screamed at Ivar to go after Ricochet. Ivar just did a running crossbody under Ricochet. Ricochet, do not try that. Just, just don't. Look, I just get concerned for everybody's well-being, and I just hurt watching Ricochet try to lift up Ivar like that. All right, that's got to be it for Ivar then, because Ricochet got the shooting star. All right, pretty serviceable matchup. Not much to really say about it, but I mean, everybody did a good job, so 
This gets a thumbs up for me. But you know what gets a double thumbs up? We get a live event in the middle of summer. I'm still trying to figure this out though. So Rhonda and Shayna won that tag team showcase, but Liv and Raquel are getting the title shot against Lita and Becky. Huh? <laughs> I mean, the Street Profits got their title opportunity on Monday night after they won their showcase match. So maybe, maybe this. Maybe Rhonda and Shane are waiting. They're probably going to wait to see what happens after Monday. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Great way to come back from commercial break. Guys, you missed it on TV. Wade Barrett almost fell out of his chair. <laughs> Protect Michael Cole at all costs. That's their tag team name. <laughs> Y'all, I can't. I swear, the way that this graphic is set up, you'd think it was like Lita and Liv that were holding the titles. Just like the way that it looks. You know what? I like this team too, Michael Cole. Glad that we're on the same page a little bit now. I like Liv and Raquel. They complement each other really well. And I don't know. They just have like some good chemistry together. Keep them together as a team for a little bit longer. I'm cool with it. Plus we need all the tag teams we can get at this point. All right. We got Liv and Natalia in the ring here. Nice back and forth. Beautiful German right there from Natalia. All right. Nice little double team right there from Natalia and Shotzi. I like Shotzi's outfit. Oh, nice stop right there from Raquel. Ooh, that was a nice DDT from Liv. Okay, a little rough oblivion right there, but I think it stuck the landing. And it did. Liv got the pin. Pretty quick match. Pretty serviceable, I would think. And it did what it needed to accomplish. So we're gonna have to see what happens moving forward. Okay, everybody just take a deep breath. We got Triple H's announcement here at the top of the hour. I don't know what to expect. It could very much be the same sort of spiel that we got on Monday. I don't know. But I'm nervous. Did we watch the same two night event, Michael Cole? We had a 30 minute bathroom break between the main event, between the last two matches on night two, for whatever reason. I love how we segued in from the backstage segment with Xavier Woods and LA Knight, and you had Xavier Woods playing the WWE video game, and while well, we get to Triple H, whose nickname is the game. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's halfway through the show, but you know what? When you get to the halfway point, you need a little bit of energy. Okay, but that's the thing about these two-night WrestleMania numbers. A lot of the people are going to be showing up both nights. I would think so, anyways. Okay, what's the future looking like? Woo! Draft time coming up! Oh my god, It's when was the last time we had a draft? When's the draft? Oh, how cool! Triple H is introducing Rhea. That's nice. We have a premium live event coming up on May 6th, the day before my birthday, by the way. So I'm wondering if that's what Triple H meant. Like, are we going to have it past that premium live event? Because I feel like that would make sense, I would think. I don't know, but we got the draft coming back, people. We have the draft coming back. Which, by the way, if you're keeping track at home, the last time we had a draft was... October 1st through the 4th back in 2021. I love how we're supposed to boo them, but yet we all really like Rhea because she's cool. Look, we're just happy to see Rhea win the title. I think that's what it is. Oh, shut up, Cole. Do you have a title? I'm glad that Finn's okay because that was a very scary moment there with that ladder. Dude, I've been a fan of Finn's for a little while now, but that was next level stuff right there at WrestleMania. All right, th keep booing Dom out of the building. Keep going. You're doing a great job, Dom. His microphone's going out, I think. Oh my god, listen to them boo this dude out of the building. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. But but you issued the challenge, and you technically put his put your hands on Ray first, Dom. Oh, shut up, Dom. <laughs> I think this is, what, three, four weeks in a row now? It's definitely gotta be four weeks now. But I really do like the story, you know, because it's like your blood's not always, you know, your actual family. You know, you have people that aren't your blood that are your true family, or you can mix and match. And again, like I said during our reaction, I can see both sides of this feud. Plus, remember Bad Bunny and Damien Priest? Like, that was like Bad Bunny's first match at WrestleMania 37. Michael Cole, calm down! But this was a fun segment. This was really good. And Dom got booed out of the building, so that's even better. Alrighty, we're back from the commercial break. Now we've got Dom and Ray in the middle of the ring right here. Okay, well, that's one way to get tagged in. All right, we got Escobar with the backbreakers to Dominic right there. Oh, there's Damien. Oh, but Ray caught him. Okay, what are they up to here? Okay, looks like we're all going running now. Oh, okay, we had a dive on each side of the ring. Okay, that was kind of cool. That was kind of cool. Wait, we just got back from the commercial break. 
<laughs> Michael Cole's like, yeah, this guy is very talented, but his attitude sucks. I think that's a good summation. But I mean, like, you know that you're onto something good, though, when you get a very just heated reaction like that. Not because it's like, you know, we want you to leave our screens, but because you're doing a really good job as a bad guy. And Dom's really come a long way. He's been really leaning into the bad guy stuff, and we're here for that energy. Well, hey, you have to even up the odds somehow, right? Zelina and Rhea are getting into it now. Run, Zelina, run! <laughs> oh, she's throwing a chair at Rhea. They're going through the crowd now. Okay, we're back to Ray and Dom in the middle of the ring, but Escobar is tagged in now. Oh yeah, that's right, Priest is the legal dude of this match. That's it. That's it for Escobar. Good job, Damien. Oh, but there goes Ray out of nowhere after the match. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing more of this, like, Judgment Day and LWO situation that we have going on. It's gonna be weird not calling them Legato anymore, though. I'll say that, but you know what? I'm looking forward to this little feud here. I am really looking forward to it. Uh, but the matchup was serviceable, did what it needed to accomplish. I liked the uh, addition of Zelina and Rhea, and so I'm wondering maybe if that's like Rhea's first opponent, which would make a lot of sense given the storyline. So we're going to have to see what happens. But overall, I think everything moved in the right direction. So so we'll take that as a win, right? Right. Wait, what is going on here? Okay, so Solo just attacked Kevin by tipping over some sort of production truck on Kevin backstage. But we just saw Sammy and Jay also having a chit chat as well, so... And Paul Heyman's right there with his cell phone. Dude, it's weird seeing the Usos without the tag titles. I'm just glad that they're just keeping this momentum going. Because it makes sense for the Usos and the Bloodline to get more dangerous than possibly ever before because, like, you know, they lost the tag titles. They want all the gold back. Alrighty, we've got Sammy versus Jay. Of course, we had all the drama backstage before the match started. Y'all, I really think Jay is going to be the one to really cost Roman that universal title. I don't think he'll be the one to take it off Roman, but I think he's going to be the cause of Roman's downfall. I really think so. Yeah, you think? The Bloodline lost their titles, you know. We haven't seen the Bloodline without Tag Team Gold in quite some time. I would think that they would want to be coming back with a vengeance. Jay and Sammy's chemistry is just... Next level, dude. Okay, well, Solo is making his way down to the ring. Oh, boy. Sammy's outnumbered. Right as we go to commercial break. They're doing a good job with these commercial breaks tonight. Alrighty, we're back from the commercial break. Uh, we have Sammy and Jay at the top of the turnbuckle, beating the crap out of each other. Nice way to get back into the matchup. Solo's just standing outside the ring. Just, he understands the assignment. He's standing outside the ring, doing his sort of enforcer stuff. Just, you know, arms crossed and all that. He understands his assignment, okay? He clearly did at WrestleMania. Beautiful move from Sammy. Absolutely beautiful. The Bloodline's been trying to take care of the Sami Zayn problem for weeks now. For months now. They haven't gotten the job done. A bleeding heart do-gooder. Sammy was a part of the Bloodline as the honorary ooze for quite some time. So he was sort of like, you know, in the group for a while. Sort of, kind of, whatever. Oh, okay, well the sound just went out. Okay, it's back. Now it's back out again. It's during the main event, Fox. Cut this crap out. Oh, Sammy's looking for it. We also have to keep in mind in this next point in the story that Jay was the one that lost the title for the bloodline. Like, he got pinned and everything like that. So there's a little bit of friction there with Jay and the bloodline as a result. Okay, we're back up to the top turnbuckle now. Like the top-down angle, although that blue light is very distracting. Oh! Well, 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 Solo. Well, well, well. Well, hey, Jay picked up a huge win against Sammy, but guess who got the win pretty much for the team? Solo's two for two this week, y'all. He is two for two this week. This is the second matchup now where Solo's done the damage towards the end of the matchup here. I mean, that just shows Solo understands his role. He understands the assignment. Oh boy, Solo's not done. Huge headbutts to Sammy. Poor Sammy. But I mean, on the other hand, like, he didn't listen to Kevin. And Kevin's his tag team partner and... His brother, essentially, right? So, there's that. As much as we love Sammy. Oh, Jay stopped Solo from spiking Sammy again. Oh, boy. Crowd's chanting for Jay now. And then Jay just goes in there and super kicks Sammy. It looked like Jay wanted to be a part of it. Which I can totally understand. But, I mean, he had us there. He had us in the first half. Riddle? Oh, yeah, no, this makes sense because Solo took out Riddle. Okay, this makes sense. I was like, what? <laughs> But then I'm like, no, that's how he got taken out in the first place. Which that makes sense because Riddle's got to get his revenge. And also, like, 
Cody's shifting gears over to Brock for the time being. So that all makes sense. The interactions we're about to get with Kevin, Sammy, and Riddle are about to be gold. Just the just from them talking and interacting with each other, that's going to be gold. Okay, we got some continuity at the end. All right, good job, SmackDown. You blew Raw out of the water. Thank goodness. But overall, this was a good main event. We furthered the plot a little bit, and they're keeping this feud fresh. And I love that for us. Riddle's getting an opportunity for revenge against Solo, who took him out months ago. And, well, Sammy's going to get revenge, hopefully, and, you know... Everyone's trying to, like, prove themselves here and get revenge. You know, everybody's got a motive now in this feud. And that's ultimately what matters, because it makes sense when we know why people are fighting each other. So overall, this matchup was good. Great main event. Great storytelling. I love the aftermath as well. And we just keep this feud moving. Like, I was concerned about it at first. I'm like, how are we going to keep things moving? But you know what? We're keeping things moving with the Bloodline arc. So this all gets a thumbs up for me. Okay, we're just going to get this out of the way now, but this completely blew Monday Night Raw out of the water. I usually don't like to compare episodes, but, you know, it's kind of easy to compare the Monday Night Raw after Mania with the Friday Night Smackdown after Mania, you know? I like what they did with the continuity with Riddle and adding him into the mix, which I think will help quite a bit and keep things fresh a little bit. But I also like how Solo, he just he just gets the job done. He understands the assignment. But I wonder, like, if he'll get pushed to a breaking point at some point, too, because it's like he's doing a lot of the heavy lifting and, you know, helping everybody win these matches, right? And, you know, I just really like the storytelling that they had throughout the show. I like how we continued, of course, the uh, Mysterio feud, but also incorporating the Judgment Day and the LWO. I thought that was really good. And, yeah, we had a lot of bright spots this week, you know. Now, were all the matches absolute, you know, classics? No, they were not, but they didn't need to be. At this point, when you're kind of past WrestleMania, you're setting up new stories or adding freshness to the stories, and they did just that today. Now, if I had to pick a couple matches from tonight's show that I thought stood out, uh, definitely the opening match with the Brawling Brutes and Imperium, and also the main event with Sammy and Jay, mainly for the storytelling purposes in that main event. It was a quick watch, and hey, people, we got the draft coming back, which is really exciting. I would take a guess probably sometime in May, if, just because we have the premium live event to get to in a month from now uh, but I'm looking forward to the draft no matter what happens because I always look forward to it because it's always fun to kind of just see where everybody lands and that sort of thing but yeah we will indeed be reacting to the Smackdown before Backlash and Backlash itself we'll have fun with it again it's my birthday weekend that weekend since my birthday's on the 7th and Backlash is on the 6th and the Smackdown before Backlash is on the 5th so we're gonna have a good time with it it'll be a lot of fun I'm really looking forward to it and we haven't even gotten a single match announced yet uh, so on that note, thank you all so much for tuning in. Let me know what you all thought about SmackDown. Let me know what you think about the draft coming up. And just because I'm curious, who would your top five picks be? If you had to pick five people on the WWE roster, you could bring up some people from NXT, all that good stuff. Let me know who your top five picks would be if you were running like Raw or SmackDown. Um, and yeah, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, make sure to hit the bell button if you do indeed subscribe here on the channel. Thank you all so much for the love and support. I greatly appreciate it. Again, thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see you all in the next one.